I thought it was a really powerful film, and I just wondered what gave you the idea to do it. Well, uh, the power of it. I mean, I, I, I felt the same thing when I first encountered the story. I just felt there was something um, so incredible about how these two people's lives intersected on this given day, both on a clear downward spiral. He had murdered four people in that day. She was a meth addict who had lost custody of her own daughter. These two people got thrown together by complete coincidence. She had only moved into that apartment the day before. Um, Atlanta, Georgia, where he had committed these murders, was about a 45-minute drive away from Duluth, Georgia. And yet, something about the interaction of these two people meant they turned, they both turned a corner beyond which he didn't kill her, which is very much what, what looked like would and should happen, and she be, you know, never touched that drug again beyond this encounter as well. There was just something so incredible about that to me. And how did you hear about it? I first en encountered it through reading a script four, four years ago. I had read Rick Warren's book, The Purpose Driven Life, before then, um, and I had got a lot out of the book, um, having read it myself, but the way it intersected with this story typified what I felt about the book, which is basically it talking about the fact that God's purpose for our lives is so much greater than, than the ones we see for ourselves. And I couldn't think of a better illustration of that than this meth addict who went on to, to live a, a, a sort of a amazing life beyond this uh, being taken hostage. And how did you become a Christian yourself? Um, I became a Christian when I was 16. I was raised in the, in, in the church. My, my parents uh, were both Baptists, but uh, you know, I very much piggybacked on their faith. It didn't really mean much to me. Um, and it wasn't until I was 16 that I kind of struck this very naive deal with God, whoever he was, and said, look, if you don't become real for me, I'm, I'm out. And um, you know, within three months of uh, <laughs> making the mistake of asking, um, he went, oh, okay, here I am. And so um, that, that was kind of it. Have you had any kind of crises in your life that made you identify with either of the characters? Um, I think, uh, you know, I've, like, like most people, I've, I've suffered loss um, that uh, can make you feel angry, that can make you feel lost. Um, you know, I think with, without excusing uh, Brian at all for what he did, you know, I'm a father myself, and you know, one of the reasons Brian felt a need to break out of the jail he was in, he was on trial for rape, is he found out that he had a newborn son, and a desire to get to his son meant that he could somehow justify killing these people to get to them. I, I can't justify that. I find that reprehensible, but I do have four children who, you know, the thought of not being near them is something I can't abide. So, you know, there, 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 there were things I was able to latch on to, and you have to latch on to, in order to, to, to play the character, but I thankfully have not experienced anything remotely like, like what you see in the film. Her words that she says to him when he's in the house about finding a purpose in life that clearly mm. are inspired by Rick Warren mm. um, are a pivotal moment in the film. Mm. Um, do you think Christ was moving at that moment, that Christ was present at that moment? I think undoubtedly, um, you know, and that's why it became the point beyond which uh, Ashley Smith's faith was grown, was rebuilt. I mean, she similarly had been brought up in the church, but it was very much uh, part of her upbringing, not something that she was living out. But, I, you know, to talk to her now, she, she, she actually said that in the moment where Brian Nichols um, at gunpoint told her to take meth with him, she felt uh, Christ take over Brian's body and say, choose life or death, which is it? Um, and in, in some ways she attributes her salvation to uh, part of, anyway, Brian Nichols and, and, and him invading her, her apartment that day. But Christ was definitely at work, and that's why she's now living the life she's leading. And is he now a Christian? Um, I, I can't speak to that. I don't know that he is. I do know 
that according to his mother, he's repentant for what he did and feels like he's where he's supposed to be. I spoke to her only um, a couple of weeks ago about that. And I, you know, I've had to do quite a bit of publicity for the film and uh, you know, I'm not shy personally about talking about my faith. And she told me that um, he was very moved by uh, an article in particular that I, that I had um, been interviewed for. So I, I don't know where he's at spiritually, but I do know that he looks on this event with, uh, with real regret and repentance. There's been a lot of controversy in America, as you know, about um, black men being shot, mm -hmm. trigger happy, or apparently trigger happy incidents, mm -hmm. which result in deaths. Yeah. Um, and there's this point in the film where you feel certain that he's going to be shot, mm -hmm. but he isn't. Mm -hmm. The opposite happens, mm -hmm. and um, it results in life, not death. Mm -hmm. How did you feel about that? Well, it's it's a very good point because yes, you know. Um, black men have been killed by the police for far, far less um, uh, than what Brian Nichols did that day. To be honest, I think partly why Brian Nichols wasn't gunned down that day was because uh, Ashley Smith uh, had been let go by him. I think, you know, one of the reasons uh, that black men are being killed um, sometimes indiscriminately in, in, in America is because there is a perception, there is a prejudice, there is a preconception that they are, they are criminalized by virtue of the color of, of their skin. And so as a knee-jerk reaction, um, they are shot out of fear, whereas just a shred of humanity that he was able to demonstrate towards Ashley Smith in terms of letting her go, I think, was partly what was playing on those cops' minds, that, okay, someone who can let her go um, may well be someone who uh, is human enough, worthy of not just being gunned down like an animal. To me, that, that has to be partly what happened that day. It's a very difficult industry, notoriously difficult, um, for, in this country anyway, for black actors to make it. I mm. don't know so much about America, but I just wondered if you had experienced discrimination. I live in America, I work in America, there are reasons why that is the case. I, you know, I know for a fact that um, roles like playing Dr. King in Selma or even being able to produce a film like Captive would not be what I would be doing if I was still lived here. And I love living here, I love the UK, I loved working here, but you know, my ambitions weren't um, fully be able to be realized here. And so, you know, I think that, that, that there is um, a lack of willingness to see these kind of stories told. Um, the ironic thing is when you gain a little bit of success elsewhere, you can come back and, and, and do those stories you couldn't get told while you were here. And so that's sort of the next step for me. I know you were in Valpony. Mm. Um, I just wondered if you had any Shakespearean thoughts that you could bring across to this film. Um, well, you know, I think that the amazing thing about Shakespeare as a writer is that somehow he is able to cram so much of humanity into a line, into a character, into a play. And that's what I think uh, Captive represents. It's, it's intimate, it's largely about two people, but it speaks to much bigger themes, spirituality, uh, the dynamic between a man and a woman, race, um, crime, murder, rape. I mean, it's all in there, all of what you would find in, in a Shakespeare play. Um, but, you know, like I say, as with Shakespeare, it's the juxtaposition of the, the, the little and the large, and that's what, what Captive also has in spades. And the last word on the role of God? Um, the, the, well, the role of God, the effect of God, and the power of God is love, uh, as, as far as I can see. And so, you know, that, as in my experience, just never fails.